Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. A certain man had two sons, had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall it to me. And he divided unto them his living. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness. That's what this young man had. Become covetous. And be content with such things as ye have. Be content with what you've got. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be content with whatever it is you have in your hand. I am God and I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as long as I'm with you, you will never be in the state of lack. I will be your good shepherd. And as a good shepherd, I will make certain that you want nothing. For God will not withhold any good thing from those who love him. Why do we sin? Why do we live in defeat? Because we think we lack something. I lack love, so I start looking for love in all the wrong places. I lack money, so I start doing everything to get the money. It doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong, and God says, don't do that. He says, I've got a way for you. It's the way of your mouth. He says, so that we may boldly say, God will never leave us nor forsake us, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. When we do not understand that principle, we compromise ourselves. And we begin to fall apart, staring ourselves away from the ways of God. Peter got afraid. Once upon a time, he was receiving a revelation of who Jesus was. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not many days after, he's swearing everything that he doesn't know Jesus because fear had held so tightly to his heart. He got estranged. But I'm thankful that in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 that this one that was once estranged was now preaching the gospel. And Peter says unto them, Repent and be baptized. Get reunited to God. Re-identified to God. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Acts 3 and verse 19, Acts 3 and verse 19, he says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is possible. Yes, God knows that you've messed up. God knows that you've blown it, and you know it. But God says, I'm here for you. I'm here to deliver you. I'm here to set you free. I'm here to make all things right in your life. So, Pastor, but I'm a Christian already. Are you living right? Or 
are you allowing the circumstances, natural things, to determine how you feel? And by how you feel, you speak in death into your life, into your environment, into your situation, rather than remembering in your father's house, even the servants, the hired servants, have more than enough. Because in God, there is no lack. Please hear me. In God, there is no lack. Let me say it again. In God, there is no lack. When you comprehend and understand that there is all sufficiency in God, you come to a place where you understand that you cannot forever be estranged from this love of God. The love of God that passes all understanding. God loves you. God loves me. And though you may fall seven times, you can stand up the eighth time. Adam and Eve sinned. And they were busy hiding themselves. I thank God that this young man came to his right mind. He says, I better go back. Sometimes it's good to go back and seek restoration. Restoration in your relationship. Yes, you may be coming back with your tail between your legs. But don't worry about it. God is a God who is watching out for you. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He's rich. Ha! <laughs> Let me restate what I started out with. If anybody asks for something, everybody gets it. But you got to know how to receive what has been given to you and appropriate it to yourself. That's right. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's right. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And today, God is calling you to come back through that awesome, magnificent name, Jesus, Yeshua. By his name, you can be reconnected back to the Father. The Father is waiting for you. Wherever it is that you're listening to me this very moment, Father God is looking out for you. In Psalm 80, And verse 19, we read, Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Cause thy face to shine. In, in short, unveil your glory into our lives. We have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Reinstate that glory and we shall be saved. 
young man comes home. Luke 15 tells us, he says, while he was a distance, far away, while he was still far away, a great way off, his father saw him. Those were the eyes of faith, the eyes of love, the eyes of mercy. Spot in him. If you make a move, the word of God says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. The father located him. While he was still a far, far away off, everything was not right yet. But he'd made a move. Everything might not be right yet, but the very fact that right now you're rethinking and saying, you know what, I made a horrible mistake. I messed up royally. I'm going to go back and ask for forgiveness. When that move, that step is embarked on, there's a trigger. Since this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now, the elder brother. This is really the prodigal that never left home. He was seven, but not seven with joy. And now he's going to get embittered because. This brother of his that he's declared a scoundrel and with his so called holy than thou attitude had not tapped into the resources that were available to him. You know, this is like Christians that want to live their lives poor. And think that is holiness. And look at others that are enjoying whatever it is they are enjoying and saying, look at them, blah, 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 blah. And you can talk about everybody that's enjoying and will not enjoy the life of God. Listen to what was said at the very beginning. If God gives to that one over there anything, he also gave it to you. So receive yours and enjoy it. The only difference must be this, that you don't go away from God and waste it in righteous living. But be that prince at home that's enjoying the fullness of God's life. We're seeing this same thing happening right this very moment in our day, in our time. A prince that is busy messing up and tearing everything apart because of whatever reason or whatever he thinks he can get out of the world. He already has it, but is not satisfied with what he's got. And bitterness has taken hold of his heart, and so now he's trashing everything. But there comes a time when you come back to your right mind. And I pray for that prince right now that he will come to his right mind and stop the foolishness. The older brother saw this guy come back and uh, he hears the music and the dancing and was wondering, What's going on here? 
Why is there music and dancing? I didn't see the program. Nobody told me there was going to be a party today and something exciting happening. How, how come I don't know what's going on? Why do they keep keeping things away from me? They say, oh, no, no, no. This, this is an impromptu celebration. What impromptu celebration? What happened? Well, your brother is back. What brother? Your brother, your, your junior brother. He's back. So that's why there's dancing. Oh yeah, there's a party going on. Do you remember that fatted calf? Yeah. Your papa killed it. What? He killed the, the cow that was being fatted? Yeah. Why? Because your brother is back, safe and sound. And he says, ah, okay. That's it. I'm not going in. That's it. And now we see that his service was not founded out of love, but out of duty. And there are people who are serving in the house of God, not out of love, but out of duty. I, I guess I have to do this. I have to do that to be a good son. No, being a good son is not about doing. It's, a, it's about being. And being in that state is founded in your love for a father who's so willing to give. Watch this. Gave to me an inheritance before its time out of his love and impartiality he gave it to me. You see, it is not that he received that the young man received that was wrong. It was what he was receiving it to do. God has more than enough to bless you with Yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. It's not about things. It's about your heart being connected with him. He says, I'm not going to go in. But this is an incredible part of this message to us today. It was one thing for the father to run to a son that was lost but it's another thing that the father came out from the party to meet with his son who is refusing to come into the celebration and says please come just come in it's all right but Father, you've never given me anything. You serious? When your son, your, your brother left, I gave him a portion and I gave you a portion. What are you saying? I've never given you anything. Well, you never gave me anything to make merry with my friends. Is that really the issue? You've never given me anything so I can have fun with my friends? What did your brother use to go make merry with his friends? What he had. He wasted it, yes, I know. But the same portion I gave to him, I gave to you. It's your, you see, people think that their happiness is dependent on somebody else making them happy. Listen, if you're waiting for somebody to make you happy, 
you're going to be very frustrated. Make yourself happy. I cannot laugh for you. You have to laugh yourself. I cannot smile for you. You have to smile yourself. Take whatever it is that you have this very moment and share and celebrate. You have what it takes to celebrate and be merry. Now he's blaming his father. You've never given me anything. You've not done anything for me. Thank God for the patience of the Father. For he says in verse 30. Or rather 31. He says unto the Son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. All I have belongs to you. What about that junior brother that just came? He's going to have now to learn about relationships. Mending fences with his brother, with his father, this is the part of the message many times that we fail to address. Honoring your father means honoring your siblings also. You're not an island to yourself. Your life is interwoven with others around you. You must seek the well-being of all. All that I have is thine. There comes a time when you and I need to recognize that. That God is bringing us into a place where the heart of the Father, listen to this, this is key. The heart of the Father needed to come into the heart of the elder son so that the elder son will now also, like the father, be a giver who celebrates his siblings. Will you be willing today to forgive and to open yourself up to be a blessing to somebody that may not be walking the way they should? If you're willing to do that, you too will experience restoration. And you too will be able to tap into all that the Father has available to you. Somebody else's blessing does not strip you of the blessing. But just as much as there's a party happening for the brother that is coming back home, there is a party happening for you too if you elect to be part of the celebration. I am certain the junior brother had a robe, but there is a robe for that elder brother that is willing to have an open heart. Child of God, stop pushing people away and become one that has the Father's 
heart. This child of God is ultimately the full essence of this parable. When the father said, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. He was saying, I need you to become like me, a father who loves and is willing to give. Because if it all belongs to you, when I step out of the way, your brother will have nothing. But I want you to open up to invest into his life again so that he can be restored and begin to flow. In this carpet that has been thrown out of restoration, do you know a brother that stepped out of the way? Should you continue to live in suspicion of him or her? What he or she might do? God says, don't do that. I'm God who is with you. Don't be afraid of what man thinks they can do. I am your keeper. I am your helper. I am your peace. In that state, you just love. That's all. All God is saying to us today is love. Have the Father's love. For God, who is the Father, so loved the world that he gave. So whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries. Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.